sure this is the hangar. Yeah, so here we are arriving at the Brazoria County Airport, which is just south of Houston, Texas. Coming out to check on the latest acquisition, Howard Hughes' Sikorsky S43. And the uh, weather's not looking too good right now, so I'm glad we're not flying it out today. But uh, it's our intent to basically uh, do a quick survey to see what we're going to need to get the airplane ferryable and fly it back to Florida. Check it out. Get it back there so everybody can see it. So let's see what we're going to find. Uh, Jim around. Hey, is this Jim? Hi. Hey, Jim. Kermit Wiggs. How oh, you doing? Hey. hey, nice to meet you. Hey, good, good. Here, Mike said you were going to be the guy that was uh, kind of in charge of the hangar here, so. Well, it's your hangar. Well, half of it, I guess. This is Andy. This <laughs> hey, is Wayne. Hey, nice to meet you, man. And, and uh, you know, so we're just going to be kind of looking around, checking things out. Sure. Let's and, turn uh, some lights on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's cool. Check awesome. It out. Good, good, good. I <laughs> love <laughs> Yeah, well, I, you know, I, I bought the airplane about a month and a half ago, and we're just basically, this is just a quick nice. trip to kind of yeah. really see what we saw. Yeah. 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 We've been figuring our stuff out, so you got plenty of room to work. Oh, cool. We, we're we're oh, right now we're looking back. Oh, okay, sweet. so the, the things for the, uh, nice. the jack and it are here. Awesome. Work stands. Awesome. I'm looking at. <laughs> is that freaking yeah. cool or what, huh? Yeah, <laughs> Here we are in Houston. Got to check out this really cool airplane that's been on my hit list for a very long time. Check this out. Too cool. Unbelievable. There's Uncle Howie, I said facetiously. This airplane, he was going to use to fly around the world. And then World War II started, and he couldn't make some of the legs because of the countries involved in the conflict. So he ended up buying a Lockheed 14, and that's what he flew around the world in. I will at some point, I hope. Come on, Howard, help me. Okay, we got, I think the engines are over here, guys. Safety, so, funny. Yeah. Those are right. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, you probably know more about it, Hermit, but I don't know where the props are. But I know oh, no, the props are. The prop shop's way to deliver them. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, this is what they're pointing out. See, they've got some. Cherry Max rivets in here and stuff, you know, and it's kind of so that's why they never splash it because it looks like it needs some hull work. So. You've seen how much fabric there is. It's the doll fabric. Yeah. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Well, not here. You know, the the flaps and the yeah, the, uh, yeah. Well, well, yeah that's the, right. the wing yeah. panels from that yeah. that factory. Well. Yeah. 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 But it's kind of like a PBY. Yeah, all out. that will, you know, we'll get everything out of the way for you to. No, I think we'll be. I think we'll never get out there <laughs> Oh yeah. You'll be here long enough to vote. Come on guys, come check it out. This is uh multi project. Right for Lona, don't <laughs> See it? Oh, the fold right? Yeah. yeah, that's nice. Yeah, I like good things. Yeah, we need to get some light in here. Yeah. Um, well, this is what this is why we came down with pens yeah. and notebooks. This yeah, exactly oh, sure. what we're yeah. all about. So. Well, you know, I'm sure we could borrow something there, but I mean, uh, I'll. Uh, you know, I think the first thing is just to absorb what yeah. it is. Yes. And yeah, sure. and then just kind of start. You know, I, I would think the first thing we ought to be looking around for is where are the batteries? What kind of batteries are <laughs> yeah. they? Let's start writing down, you know, what 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 size tires are they? Standing on you know, what uh, 
Yeah, I mean, and just start, you know, it's a it's an elephant. What's We're just going to do it a bite at a time. Can you lift that panel right there below you? Yeah. What the hell's down in there? Yeah. Okay. Well, let's yeah, let's go let's go grab some flashlights, yeah. and uh, just kind of start cruising around and let's just kind of yeah, inspect it and see what uh, see what we're finding in there. All those racks at the back Jim says we can have so if you get the stuff off the floor start seeing where everything you know what we've got and what we have. I'm gonna call there. Jess, Jess Bootenhoff and if he's here he, you know he may he, if he's in town maybe he might come out today because yeah. I think he used to fly it. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. Well, the more you have in your head of systems and how it works, the easier it's going to be. Let's oh, yeah. Do you want to take all those out? And uh, we, should, we should take them back if come. It's all right. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. All right. Set that. Ooh, right that's there. cool. Yeah. Canteens. I like that. Oh, awesome. Huh. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Wayne. Let me get around you. Can We've got scotch, vodka. <laughs> <laughs> Better make sure there's a rum one. Stick my hand in here. Oh. Yeah, this is just okay. Yeah, okay. Well, let's let let's go get some tools and the lights and. Well, man, what a big project. You just take it one bite at a time. You know, hopefully we could check this one thing off the list, and that's the fact that the fabric's all still good. That's why I insisted we bring a fabric tester because I mean there's so much fabric on the airplane. If we know that's good, that's one less thing. If the fabric's bad, man, we got a much bigger job than we expected. So, um, so anyway, let's grab the tools and uh, yeah. see what else we can find. All right, I got my coffee. It's not too cool here. I got a jacket I can get dirty in. Let's go to work. It just wants to be something to is what we're looking for. 40, 50, 6. It's cracking the paint a little bit, but the fabric's plenty strong. I gotta check a bunch of different spots. Yeah, Whoop! That's no good. Man, that, that's no good. I had it back through here. Three, nine. Three nine. Nice. Thirteen. You're going to see if there's some of the gear. Tell me that. They've done, they've started changing the hoses and the hoses are new but they're not attached to them. Looks like this. Keep the flashlight because I don't look at the panel and stuff. Looks like this opens up too. Good job. Can get that open. There we go. Some light. Cool. So those are the engine mount bolts? Yep. So huh. eight, eight of them in there. You know, something we ought to do, we ought to uh, check the thread size and just bring a 
chase or die, you know, just... Okay, hey, well, I don't see a flight manual anywhere. Got a stove, not to be used during flight. Pipe flight. The metal's blowing apart. That's what they did because they put it between the jack the airplane to pump the gear down so it's pumping. You got that ladder. Hey, Jess, how you been? Good to see you. Good, 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 good. God, how long has it been since I was here? Oh, it, it like say it's been five. Five or six years since you were here. Really? Oh my God, yes. Yeah. So anyway, so lucky me, I ended up doing a deal on the thing about a month and a half ago, and it oh, was, you uh, did? Did yeah, you it's my that? airplane. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, congratulations, yeah. man. I've been involved in the airplane since uh, back in the late 70s and uh, early 80s, but I flew it the first time in October 1990. Okay. Howard Hughes had flown it the last time back in 1952. That was the last time. That's the last flown. time I'd oh ever been flown since 1990. Huh? The airplane uh, I found to be very, very trustworthy. And uh, so, was, I mean, I got a C-47. It's a kind of fly, kind of like similar DC-3 speeds. If you, and, if you uh, uh, can handle that damn Goonie bird, you can handle this with no trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, cool. But it's a. It really is a neat machine. I just. This doesn't. The airplane's so valuable. Oh, yeah. It would be a shame to put it at any risk. And I'm just sitting here thinking about this. You know, we're looking at the fabric. The fabric's probably okay to ferry, but it's got to be recovered at some point. The hole needs work because of the. Uh, you know, there's some stuff on the other side, and there's some inner granular down yeah. on it. It's fine to fly from a land point of view, but you wouldn't want to put it in the water. Oh no, you wouldn't want to put it in the water. And what we were talking about this morning was the fact that you could, uh, you know, get it home, put it on display. Part of my problem is I don't have any place to put it right now. I got to build another hangar. Oh. But, but the reality is, you know, we were going to get it home and then not fly it again until we went through it. But the reality is if you're going to go through it, you're going to take the damn thing apart anyway. Yeah. My, my, my gears are grinding right now. Hey, hey, Wayne and Andy. Hey, grab a tape measure and come here for a second. We just ought to take the damn thing apart and take it home and put it in the new freaking warehouse. I mean, what, what, what am I thinking here? Why are we going to risk the airplane trying to figure it out and do a bunch of work here when we get home, we're just going to take it apart? We'll throw some people at it and we'll do it right. That yeah. makes the most sense. So yeah. what I'm trying to do is give me a measurement across the... Yeah. We came with the intent actually to put the engines back on. They've been overhauled, propellers and stuff. And the intent was to uh, get it going, fly the airplane back, very back to fantasy of flight. And the more we looked at it, the more we realized we were gonna put all this effort and work into it to ferry it back, only really to take it apart because it really needs to be restored property. Uh, it's Howard's airplane, it's very historic, very famous airplane. It's the only one in the world that's ever gonna fly. And it's just too rare and valuable to risk flying at home on a ferry permit only to take it apart. That's uh, just not worth the effort. Uh, I self-insure my airplanes and uh, my insurance basically is putting the right amount of money into making sure that it's safe. So uh, to honor Howard and the airplane and the history, we're gonna disassemble it. That's the plan now and take it back, uh, put it on uh, display in the storage uh, facility while we take parts off and restore them as we go and at some point uh, when we get some room you know we put the whole airplane get her flying it so uh, anyway it'll be on display in pieces as it gets restored eventually back to flying conditions so come out and check it out at Fantasy of Flight. Did reclusive Houston-born billionaire Howard Hughes arrange the sale of his personal plane from beyond the grave? Well, that's what the new owner of that plane is suggesting, and Ned Hibbert is here with the exclusive story. Ned? In the 1930s and 40s, guys, this particular aircraft was the pinnacle of luxury. But for years, it's just been collecting dust in a Brazoria County hangar. Well, that is about to change.
got is the registration for the airplane with the N number and my name on it, so yep. pretty cool, huh? Like the new owner of any plane, Kermit Weeks was hoping to fly her home. But this isn't just any plane. It's a 1937 Sikorsky S-43 that once belonged to entrepreneur and daredevil pilot Howard R. Hughes. Today, cobwebs drape the controls, and the nose of the craft is speckled with corrosion. In short, she is neither airworthy nor seaworthy. It's not worth risking the airplane. It's so rare, it's so famous, it's got such a great history. It's the only one in the world that's ever gonna fly and uh, we need to do it right. The world's largest plane and storm center of a congressional inquiry awaits tests. Howard Hughes built and piloted in 1947 the Spruce Goose, a seaplane made of wood with the longest wingspan in history. They said it would never fly, but it did, barely. This was the eccentric genius's test plane for that flight. Howard Hughes also used it to fly around his movie star girlfriends like Rita Hayworth and Greta Garbo. And once, while practicing water landings, he crashed it near Las Vegas. The airplane was damaged significantly, sank to the bottom of Lake Mead. He hired some uh, Navy divers to bring it up, and within a year he had a flying again. Kermit Weeks will be attempting a similar resurrection. Weeks owns Fantasy of Flight, an aviation attraction just outside Disney World. He first laid eyes on Hughes's personal plane about a decade ago at an air show. The craft was then piloted by Jess Butenhoff, one of a handful of men ever to fly it. It was amazing the number of people who knew about the airplane but didn't realize it was still in existence. Kermit Weeks wanted the seaplane but says the price was sky high. Howard came to me kind of like, let's just say in a dream, and lo and behold, he said he was going to help me get the airplane. Flash forward a few years, the aircraft's owner had passed away and his estate was eager to sell. Weeks won't say what he paid. Uh, let's put it this way, uh, if you can't afford the fuel cost, which is about uh, probably a couple of gallons a minute, uh, you can't afford the airplane. 50 miles from this hangar, in a cemetery plot near downtown Houston, Howard Hughes has been resting since 1976. But you can't tell Kermit Weeks that the brilliant but tortured Texan hasn't pulled a lever or twisted a knob since then. Here I am standing here in front of Howard Hughes' S-43, so all I can say is thank you, Howard. <laughs> right now the plane is being disassembled so it can be trucked to Fantasy of Flight and restored to airworthiness. Kermit Weeks hopes to have it on display there in Orlando by the end of the year.